everyone, my name is Rachel and I'm an artist based out of Los Angeles and I have two pieces here at the Luz de Jesus Gallery for the show Divine Alchemy. This piece over here is treacherous and the piece with the cat is um, haunted. Generally, I'm not very good at titling things, but with this series, I've been looking at a lot of pulp art and a lot of like pulp fiction books and like there tends to be a lot of exclamation points and short titles because it was mostly about like the image on the cover. So that's why I'm trying to stick to like one to two word names like haunted or treacherous. And it's like the image is kind of more of the point. <laughs> Like this one's a little more Victorian. This one's a little more like, I'd say 40s, also inspired by like the Crypt Keeper in terms of like the breakdown of the narrative. Like there's three different like levels there. There's like the little bubble, the big piece and the small piece. So the idea of like how to convey narrative in a more um, kind of visually discernible way instead of it just being one piece like this, that way it tells a little bit more of the story. Yeah, just like interested in like old comics, old like, little pulp fiction books that used to be in your pocket and they're kind of considered trashy at the time because it's very novella-esque. So it's very like high drama. They're made to be read like very rapidly. That's why they were very cheap. So they're even printed on like yellow paper, which was like cheaper than like, you know, the white paper at the time. This is the third piece of my horror series. I did this in 2021. I wanted to do something that conveyed that kind of psychological darkness without a very obvious external component. So for example, like in my other pieces, there's no like murder, there's no like a monster, which I do like, but I wanted to do something a little different. It's very moody, it's very dark. There's lots of drips, it's black and white. This is obviously not a happy photo <laughs> painting. Um, and I really wanted to find a way to convey like mood. For me, that's really important. It's not just a scene. For me, it's a feeling that I want to invoke. Tell us about some of the stuff you do on social media. Um, well, I mean, social media is really a great tool if you're a young artist, I would say, because I never had that kind of access to artists growing up. It was all like in a history book. So it's really cool to like watch people's process, learn about how they do things and uh, just see how they run their careers because there wasn't that level of transparency, you know, even just 10 years ago. Um, so with my art, I try to do on social media, I try to explain kind of my, the art, my references, show like things that really inspire my work because I think art can be really daunting and social media is a great way to get people on the same page and like get them to understand like where you're coming from in a way it's not intimidating because art and like you know art openings museums galleries can be really intimidating um but social media is a great way to kind of break that wall and connect with people and get them into see art and appreciate it but yeah I, I love the storytelling you do there and sort of like the way uh you bring people into the art through sort of all those different stories that come through yeah, TikTok well, and everything. Totally. Well, I think, you know, everybody watches movies, not everyone buys art. So I think for me, my art is so inspired by film and so inspired by, you know, fiction that these are great avenues to enter into the art world. So it's like, oh, you've seen a scary movie. Like you, you can like, oh, that's like a good starting point for you to understand the works. What is it like being an artist in LA? Because I lived in New York six years. I went to school in New York came to here, lived here seven years. Um, New York is a much younger scene, which is really nice. You have a lot of opportunities. It is interesting that LA is really developing as a solidified art place. Um, but at the same time, it still has a little bit of that newness to it, a little bit of that kind of younger, kind of new frontier vibe to it, which is really exciting and interesting um, versus New York, of course, it's like very blue chip and you're competing against people who've been doing this for 40 years. Yeah, yeah. Which is daunting yeah, <laughs> as yeah. a young artist. Do you feel like there's a lot of references in LA that you kind of use and explore? Well, the older I get, the more I realize how American my work is and how American my point of view is. Um, like these kind of films, we talked about pulp art, we talked about comics, you know, drive-in movies, horror movies. That is all very ingrained in, for an, an American psyche. Like these kind of paintings would not be made in Paris. Living in LA has really let me embrace film as an inspiration. Just kind of the idea of integrating film, film theory, and like using that as a springboard for my work has really been a big part of being in LA. And of course, pop culture references, because um, LA is where like, you know, Hollywood culture is made. <laughs> like, I love Hollywood history, and I think it's so interesting to kind of understand that everything's happening at once. It's like, you know, I'm at this stop sign, and this is where Jane Mansfield did this, and this is where this film was made. You know, it's like all these things are all happening at once, and it's very cool to experience it um, and feel the footprints that people have left. And to use that as inspiration, I think it's really interesting.